Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel and most importantly, welcome to the new year. Happy 2022. And if you were not like me and maybe you have a life, you didn't spend the 11.59 to 12.01 period staring at Twitter, you might not have noticed that the Series 12 rules are announced. And so starting on February 1st, as you can see on screen, we will be playing with two restricted Pokemon and Dynamax allowed. And that is not the only interesting thing about this. The other interesting thing is that the announcement says this will last until August 31st, which means we have a seven month format with two restricted. So I wanted to not only let you all know that, but to talk to you about my initial impressions about this and what I'm excited about and maybe what I'm a little bit disappointed about. So first and foremost, seven months for a uh, seven month long format is really exciting. I am I'm super excited about this. This is something that of course you are probably used to if you are an older player, if you've been playing um, for a long time, just because this is not unusual for you, right? Like this is how VGC has been until the start of 2020 when we had these three month long series. And even recently, if you think about it, series eight and series 11 were the same format. It essentially lasted about six months. Same with series seven and series nine was about a six month format. A seven month format is not that unusual. And it's good to know that we are going to be playing the same format for every single local, every single regional and the world championships, it makes it means that it's gonna be really easy to practice, it really easy to prepare. Uh, we don't have to worry about something like the format switching a month before Worlds and all of my preparation going to waste. And so that's one thing I'm excited about. I also think that it means that we're going to see innovation constantly. Um, this is something that was some, a little disappointing in uh, these series formats was that we didn't get to see innovation. We had, a lot of times we had Players' Cup or we had some big combination event um, and then the format stopped and everyone was like, oh, the format was solved. But that's not the case, it really wasn't. And I think Series 8 is a great example of that because if you look back at Players' Cup, I think the conclusion was that, okay, Sun is broken, Venusaur is broken, this is the only thing we're doing. Um, and that of course was not the case at all moving on to Series 11. And so if you look at like the teams that did well in the Desafio LATAM tournament that uh, was the culmination of Series 11, uh, they look nothing like the teams that we saw at, throughout Series 8. Now, Series 8 itself had a lot of development. I, I really enjoyed it. I don't want to talk too much about Series 8, but like I did make a video that caught the, at the beginning of Series 11 talking about the development of Series 8 and how I thought Series 11 might develop. And moving from this like sun dominated format where you had three or four really good sun teams that and those were like the by far the best teams to use other than maybe colossal uh we see that you know uh blastoise dragapult got really popular for a period of time and did very well we see that uh zation gastrodon rotom was the dominant team towards the end of the format and did very very well and then we see two caloric shadow that i think were really just built to beat this rotom zation gastrodon team that was everywhere at the in this grand finale that did extremely well. And I especially want to give props to Marco Fierro for building a team that like genuinely, he said, okay, this is how the format's changed. We're going to build a team that beats the teams that currently exist in the format, not the teams that existed several months ago. Um, and that's the format development that I love to see. Um, and so even though series eight looked like a solved format, we saw constant format development over the course of the six month period that this format lasted. And that's despite the fact that most people got really, really bored of series 11. A lot of people just didn't play series 11 and we still saw development for the people who were taking it seriously. And so that's part of why I'm really excited for this seven month long format. I do think that we're going to see a lot of development. And then of course the world championships is this grand culmination. And we always see people innovate and bring their best teams and really perfect their teams and perfect their game plans, especially for this championship. So I, again, I, I, I can't state how excited I am for an extended format. I think we've been missing this for a long time. And I hated that they've gone back to the same format with a gap in between. Now that we have it you know, all in one go, I think it's significantly better just because it means that we can pace ourselves and we don't have this like, we, we can continue to keep building even after you know one big event happens. It's not just like there's nothing to build for. Um, like it happened in series 11 right now, where after Desafio, I think a lot of players were just like, there is no reason to keep playing this format. There is nothing to play for. And so uh, the other problem with series eight and series 11 to some extent was that it did feel like a little matchup roulette. -y. Like going back to the teams, um, I don't think, I don't think that the, the team that won can ever be the best team in a format truly just because it it, it has Gastrodon and it has Rotom. And 
those Pokemon are not powerful Pokemon. They are Pokemon that do very well against very specific Pokemon, right? And of course, like Grimstar and Zacian do very well to everything. That's why they were so popular the entire format. But I think that the part of the reason why Marco did so well was because he could overpower those relatively weak choices and the metagame would continue developing if people continue to keep playing. Because of that, it felt like a little bit of a matchup roulette where Sun felt like it had the best wider matchup spread, but we weren't always facing, but, but these teams were built to beat Sun, which is why, again, going back to it, we only saw one Venusaur. These teams were built to beat Sun teams. And and that kind of made it a little more matchup roulette than I would have liked. Uh, I think the two restricted solves that problem. That's what I was trying to get at. Uh, series, series 12 solves the problem that we had in a lot of Series 10, a lot of Series 11, a lot of Series 8. It's going to be less matchup roulette I hope. I also think that Dynamax contributes to the matchup roulette because if you have a small team advantage, you can suddenly take advantage of it significantly more because you just have this ability to overpower people and steamroll people. Whereas if you've been playing BDSP like I have for the last couple of weeks, uh, you might notice that even if you feel like your team is at a disadvantage, you still have the ability to outplay people a little more than you do in a Dynamax format. Uh, and so because of those two things and because of the fact that like now you now if you if your one restricted is bad in a matchup, you still have a second restricted. Worst case, you're bringing one restricted. The difference in power level is lower than if you can't bring your restricted at all. Uh, I think because of that, we're going to have less of a matchup roulette type format. So that's my hope. But at the same time, Dynamax might contribute to that as well. Now, I will point out, there have been a few tournaments hosted in this format. Uh, these were a while ago. I don't think they've been hosted recently, but um, Aaron Trailer recently retweeted uh, his with team and his team report that he used to win one that happened back in December of 2020, I believe, maybe November. Um, so over a year ago, but this is a good starting point for the format. I believe these were ladder tours. They might be a little different from the formats that we are used to hosting regionals in, for example, certainly not open team sheets, but uh, I think it will be interesting to go look back. And I certainly will be doing a lot more research um, as I uh, you know, start to make content for this format. I'll, I'm going to go digging and try to find some of the teams that do well and talk to the players who did well. Um, that's my goal. And of course, if you want to see all that content and be the first to see it, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Uh, and so, well, now finally, my impressions of the format itself. Uh, I don't want to give you uh, hot takes, you know, like two hours into the announcement of a format because they're not going to be very good hot takes. I'm not going to be right but I can give you questions that I'm going to be asking myself as I'm team building and that you should probably be asking yourself as you're team building. And those questions, the first question is, are GMAX moves going to continue to be broken? GMAX was this incredibly powerful force throughout series eight and series 11, where residual damage managed to do so much. Um, but I think that the format's going to be a lot faster now. Two restricted means there's a lot more damage coming out, and there's probably fewer ways to mitigate this damage, and you also have fewer room for defensive tools on your team. And as such, I suspect the format's going to speed up. And if that's the case, then residual damage, which goes over the course of four turns, might be harder to take advantage of because it takes a lot longer to fully manifest. And I think one of the weaknesses of residual damage was Caloric Shadow in the first place. So now, as the format speeds up, and Caloric Shadow being a hyper-offensive team, um, now as the format speeds up and maybe tends more towards hyper-offense as defensive teams have a tougher time operating, maybe we see GMAX moves reduce at the same time. Uh, I still think that you know GMAX moves inherently, this residual damage is just ridiculous. It's an absurd amount of damage to be putting out just for free, basically. Uh, and also, uh, Groudon is maybe just better now. Like Groudon, you had to commit to it being your only restricted. It had some weak matchups that you didn't want to bring it to, but now you get to bring it with a partner Pokemon. You get to bring it with maybe a Xerneas or maybe with a, a Zacian or a Calibrex Shadow. Like you can get to click Max Phantasm next to your Groudon. How crazy is that? Um, and so as such, like I suspect that we're going to see those Groudon teams run Venusaur very consistently because you can opt to Dynamax your Venusaur or Dynamax your Groudon. And that brings me to my second question. Should you be maxing a restricted? Because that's that's I th I suspect that if you get two restricteds, you should be maxing your restricted because it does so much damage. They have su such a powerful wide move pool a lot of times. Um, obviously, Zacian can't Dynamax, which is why I think it's going to be a really phenomenal 
uh, partner to whatever your primary restricted is, but if you can max your Calyrex Shadow consistently and put it next to a Zacian and click Behemoth Blade after Max Phantasm, there aren't a ton of things that can live up, like live those attacks. Same with uh, taking a Max Phantasm into Precipice Blades, right? Those are going to be really powerful threats. And I know the team that I showed with Aaron was using Evil Tall as a potential Dynamax. Obviously, he also had a Regigigas as a Dynamax, but Evil Tall can click Max Airstream and Max Darkness, which makes it a really powerful threat. Um, and uh, not on this team specifically, but on other teams, maybe you can even take advantage of that with something like Kyogre, which can click a water move next to it and really take advantage of those max darkness move uh, boosts and those speed boosts, which it really needs. And so that's like, that's my initial thought is that you really want to Dynamax your restricted and that restricted that can Dynamax and uh, create advantage while Dynamax are going to be really powerful. Again, I suspect that you're going to see Groudon Venusaur teams because the Groudon can max in matchups where you need it to, or the Venusaur can ma max in matchups where you want that residual damage. Um, I, I like, and potential, I don't know, like I, again, two hours into the format, maybe you put a Calyrex next to it and you say you can max the Calyrex or you can do the, put the residual damage out and then you can click max, uh, or then you can click Astro Barrage once their, your opponent's Pokemon are weakened from residual damage and Precipice Blades and you can clean up the game that way. Maybe you put a Zacian next to it because Zacian doesn't have to Dynamax and you could always might Dynamax your Venus or your Groudon. But I suspect right now, that restricteds that can Dynamax are going to be a lot better. Um, and that includes things like Ho-Oh and Lugia. Maybe uh, Lugia still is kind of iffy, but Ho-Oh especially, I think is going to see a bump in usage. Evil Tall is going to be significantly better in this upcoming format, partially because Calyrex Shadow is going to be better, partially because it can Dynamax really effectively. Those are my initial takes. Um, the next question is that, do you run a Zacian or a Calyrex on every team? Because I really feel like you might. Like, Zacian really is the perfect secondary restricted for any team. It, it's hard not to, like, just, like, Zacian's just a Pokemon. Zacian's just a really, really powerful Pokemon. I think that initially we're going to see a lot of Zacian. But I wonder if we're ever going to see that trend drop off. It's just, it's an absurd Pokemon. It really is. Similarly, Calyrex is also an absurd Pokemon. It does a crazy amount of damage. It is a really advantageous Dynamax. It's really advantageous if you don't Dynamax, if your opponent's Pokemon are weakened. Um... Maybe the increase in Evil Tall will make it tougher to use, but I suspect that we are going to be seeing Zacian or Calyrex on almost every team. I personally, as I've been, again, I've put less than an hour of thought into this, but I have a hard time building a team that doesn't have a Zacian or a Calyrex on it, um, just from my initial theorying. And then finally, oh, and especially with Calyrex, it doesn't have to do all the damage, right? Like a lot of times Calyrex teams were really reliant on Calyrex to do a lot of damage. And, and, you know, we saw the team with Cinderace or Colossal that could put in some work for it. But now they have a Groudon or a Zacian next to it that can chip down whatever is scary for the Calyrex. And now you can let the Calyrex clean up like it really wants to. That's absurd. Um, and then finally, are Grimstarl and Screens and like Prankster Thunderwave still broken? Because it, it's it, obviously that was the, the defining trait of Series 11. Uh, I wonder if that is still going to continue to be crazy in Series 8, I sus or Series 12. I suspect the answer is yes, just because um, it really consolidates those last, the, the partner slots that you need. It has great coverage. Um, and on top of that, it has all of the moves that you need for a supportive Pokemon um, between Thunder Wave, between screens, between things like fake tears to increase your damage output. Um, it, it's it really, or even like Trick Lagging Tail, for example, right? Or Trick uh, Eject Button. It has a lot of different potential supportive options. Um, it's always going to be a good Pokemon. And I think it's one of the few tools that we have that can really effectively slow the game down, especially in a format that is going to have a lot of Evil Tall, I suspect, and a lot of Calyrex, I suspect. And I don't think as many Zations are going to get want to get Thunder Waved either. So I think it's going to be a very popular choice, but I don't know if it's going to be as popular as Series 11. Uh, it's just going to be hard not to start building with it in the builder. So those are my initial questions and initial thoughts on Series 12. And obviously, like I mentioned, we're going to have a lot more Series 12 content coming out over the next couple of months, uh, obviously. And so, uh, and you know, hopefully as live events come back, we can uh, ramp up uh, live event coverage as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys are excited for Series 12. Let me know down in the comments what your initial impressions are for Series 12. Are you excited? Are you excited about the seven month long format? Are you disappointed in the list of Pokemon that are available? Uh, how? What, what's, you, what's the first team you're going to build? I don't know. I've got so many questions. I'm so excited about this just because it's going to be something different because I have something to build towards again. And until next time, I will see you all later.